Hello chess lovers, Stolen here and in this video I want to share with you a mega exciting attacking game played by the 11th world chess champion Robert Fischer. His opponent is Argentine chess grandmaster Julio Bolbochan and this game was played at 1962 Stockholm Interzonal. In this game Fischer had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Bolbochan answered with Sicilian defense. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, d4, knight takes, d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. Neither variation is on the board, against which Fischer is choosing the Adams attack h3. The h pawn is coming to support this guy on g2 in order to start a pawn push. Knight c6, g4, knight takes d4. Well, theory recommends queen b6 or e6, this seem to be better alternatives, now, but in the game we see an early exchange of knights on d4, e5 queen d3, bishop e7, g5 knight d7, bishop e3, knight c5, uh, capturing on g5 and giving up this pawn on d6 is also something which is worth of taking into consideration, this is how the line goes. And then queen takes d6, queen e7. Uh, but in the game we see knight c5. Queen goes back on d2, bishop e6. After which we have opposite side castlings, which I always love to see on the board because this leads to sharp double-edged positions. King b1. When you are playing against Sicilian and you are castling long, playing this move is always a good idea, you know. It's good to have the king away both from the c file and also from c1 uh, h6 diagonal. Uh, 97 by Bolbochan, h4 b5, bishop h3 and bishop takes h3. Uh, Blick also could not hurry and could play a move like knight b6. This could be the logical continuation of knight d7, but Blick decided to go for that maneuver only after an exchange on h3. Bishop takes b6. This is a very important move with which white is removing the knight, which could already create problems for him, and is getting a position where white has a good knight against a bad bishop. This knight is just a monster and will now guarantee white a huge advantage. How are you going to get rid of this monster? Just no way you know, and this bishop on e7 is like a pawn and is destined to protect the pawn on d6. Queen goes back on d8 which is too passive. Protecting the bishop from the 7th rank is better and at the same time in this case black can hope for an idea like bishop d8 followed by bishop b6. Activating this bishop but instead we see queen d8. Here comes f4. White is just proceeding with the attack. No problem at all. By the way, you should not be tempted by winning a pawn because it's poisoned in the end of the day there is this rook fd8 move. Uh, that's why in the game we simply see f4. He takes f4, queen takes f4, white queen occupied a very pleasant square, queen f5, rook cd8. Of course you can't go for queen takes f5 because of this knight takes e7 check. And if rook fd8 then queen takes d7 followed by knight b6, the fork is winning. So in the game we see rook cd8 and rook a3. First white is attacking this pawn on a6, is inviting black queen to step on a7 square, and then is playing rook c3 this time with the threat of rook c7. Black is in trouble, yes. Black's position is totally lost. Just a positional masterpiece by Fischer, right? But still, Bolbochan didn't resign and he kept on making moves. He played a g6. Uh, by the way, if rook d7 not allowing white rook to intrude inside the 7th rank, then can you find a winning move for white? Ready? In here, knight f6 check is winning. If g takes f6, then g takes f6. One, you are managing to open up the g file. The rest is super easy. If king h8, then f takes e7, or if bishop takes f6, then g takes f6, and again white is winning. White queen will now exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares. After rook g8, rook c8 is winning. Black king is in a mating net. 
so in the game to rook c3, black answered with g6 and queen g4. The queen can now support the advance of this h pawn. Queen d7, queen f3, queen e6. Well, you can't play rook c8 because after an exchange on c8, again, in the end of the day, there is this unpleasant fork. Uh, black played queen e6 and rook c7. Now, if rook d7, then knight f4 is winning. Uh, black played rook d e8, but anyways, knight f4 followed queen e5, rook d5, and queen h8. Just take a look at this miserable position, guys. Black's position is like under hydraulic press, and the name of that press is Fisher. Fisher is simply pressing his opponent with all his might, and already I can see huge cracks on Black's defense. A3 by Fisher. He's not hurrying with the attack. First, he's opening up a luft for his king, and he's like putting his opponent in Tsuktsavang, you know. It's always good to make waiting moves in difficult positions. Your opponent himself will make mistakes. h6. Meanwhile, uh, Black is trying to somehow activate his position, activate this queen. g takes h6, queen takes h6, and h5. A move which just asks itself to be played, right? And victory is just a matter of moves, you know, no way out. If g5, then knight e2 can win. And then knight g3, knight f5 idea can be very useful. Uh, in the game, uh, bishop g5 was played and h takes g6. Fisher is sacrificing this knight, but accepting it uh, also won't give you much. g takes f7, check will follow, and then after an exchange on f7, Rook h5 is winning. If here, then this time rook f5. Uh, in the game, f takes g6 was played, then queen b3. This is insane, guys. Fisher sees the whole board and he knows where exactly to put his attacking pieces. This time, Fisher is emphasizing the vulnerability of a to g8 diagonal. Now, if you move away your king from that diagonal, then knight g6 can follow. And then rook takes g5. If queen takes g5, then queen h3 check, followed by queen h7. And if rook f1, then simply king a2. Now again, this check won't give you anything. Queen takes g5, then check. And this time, of course, there is no checkmate. This time you can just win the rook. Uh, in the game, uh, Black decided to accept the knight's sacrifice and win it with the rook, but there followed a long-awaited discovered check. Rook e5 check, king f8, and after rook takes e8 check, Paul Bochan resigned. If king takes e8, then queen e6 check, and then queen c8 check, right? Yeah. Bishop d8, queen takes d8 checkmate. That's why after rook takes e8, as mentioned above, resignation followed. For Fischer, uh, this was an important victory, and he treasured it in his book My 60 Memorable Games. Hope that you enjoyed this marvelous attacking game, and in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the mating line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.